a logical file uh, the record format has to be same okay if you will put a different record format the, the logical file will not get compiled and you have to mention this p file this p file means this will give the physical file name here okay and then you can give the keyword so what is the like the main purpose of creating a logical file the first and the uh, the utmost thing is this changing the sequence of key fields okay this is a basic thing other thing is if you like let's suppose you have employee id and employee age you want only those em or employee id whose whose count is like their employee id from 1 to 1000 you want uh, only from 1 to 50 or any particular value you want okay so those thing you can like put the condition select condition here and then uh, you can use like you can filter some records also in logical files that's a concept okay okay so yes this is uh, this is how it works so uh, first you have to define a record format then a physical file p file and then you, you you'll give uh, what are the key fields you can change the key field okay so and then it will be getting compiled let me compile it yes the object is compiled then yes let's check what 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 dsp fd file description so if you have any logical file then how to check in which physical file it is based so you'll use the command dsp fd for that and then you will input file this is a member but yes here you will got to know that file access by logical file files access by logical file so this is a physical file in which logical file is based so i've told you that day also right that uh, mm -hmm. some like sources you will be not be able to see everywhere but this command spfd and just the uh, this logical file name that you can do anywhere spfd okay. inpu log okay so through this command you can just uh, see that uh, in which physical file it is based okay and mm -hmm. it is picking the input file that physical file from which library and what is the record format of that physical file so there are a lot of information available here yeah this is so this is also the same thing based on file so if uh, uh, just a shortcut whenever you come here and you know don't need to scroll you'll you'll see because based it this search option is uh you can say case sensitive okay if you'll search for base it will not but if you search here then it will give you the exact name so what we do generally we remember the three letters okay so instead of uh, shift base we do it to make it easier so you'll search for it the base and then you'll got to know that in which file it is based in which file this logical file is based hope it's clear till this point yeah okay dsp dbr is one command okay so if you you need to find out uh, what is a what is uh, like you have to find out that uh, you have to change uh, make a change let's suppose you got a scenario that you have to change uh, a field in a logical file okay so how you will cater those changes in a whole system that that is a, a one of the common question in an interview okay that how you will proceed further if you need to change a a field in a logical file okay so what you'll do first you will check you'll, you you should you'll be having the name of logical file so we'll be checking in which physical file it is based 
okay because you cannot i have told you you cannot directly delete the logical file so work object input log okay i am trying to delete it so it will be getting deleted so yeah, the other thing it's it's vice versa actually when i am trying to delete or change the physical file INPU input file. Okay. It is saying cannot delete the file member input file. So if any logical file is based on any physical file, you cannot directly delete the physical file. You have to first delete the logical file and then you'll delete the uh, the physical file. Hope you got this concept. Okay. Yeah. So uh, after you have uh, done the like figured it out that which is a physical file uh, which is based uh, which is linked to this logical file then you will have to check that how many logical files are based on the physical file okay it may be the case that a lot of logical files which are attached to that physical file right so that the command for that is dsp dbr which stands for display database relation okay so this dsp dbr work only on physical file okay it will not work for logical file so if you will do dsp dbr input file you see only one dependent file is there input log if if it let's suppose in an environment there are 10 logical files so after this command uh, we'll be having this 10 files listed over here so in this way you can find out that how many uh, logical files are dependent in a physical file on the same way if you do dsp dbr in input log logical file it will not say anything because in a nothing will be dependent on a logical file. It's a logical file is an independent entity because it, it itself is a dependent on something else. Okay. So it will not, the number of dependent file, it will say zero. Okay. So DSP DBR is not a command for logical file. It's just a command for physical file. Okay. There's a, another concept of reference field. Okay. So generally what happens in a company like like this, we have created a, a file and this field we have already declared like the attribute we have written here, right? So generally this is not a common practice. This I've shown you just for the, this, uh, what we say, just for the demo purpose. But actually what happens, there is one reference file which will have, which will actually don't have the data. It will only hold all the field. Okay. So this is, it, it will not look like this. It will look like the same, like an input file, but it will don't, it, it will not be having any key field. It will be only having the field and its description. And there will be a lot of field, like a hundred or thousand. So how the common practice is whenever you want to declare any new field you have to first declare that field in a reference file and then you can use that field in whatever file you want to add so how to like without giving any like attribute how to get refer a field from a reference file okay so here is an example so this is a like another physical file which I have created is it is a file pf. Okay, here you have to on the first place. Okay, because this ref field is a file level keyword. Okay, file level keyword means it has been used. It whatever whatever is been written here under this file level keyword, the effect of it will be in whole file. Okay, let's suppose like I've written something here. So the effect of this command will be only on the field. So that's how we call it. It is 
a file level keyword or a field level keyword. Hope you got it. So this ref means we can refer the field from this file. Okay. So uh, in your in in the company with in which you'll be working, there uh, there will be one file which which is generally called as reference file, which will be not be having any data. It will be only having uh, the field declaration there. Okay. Because it's easy. Let's suppose there's a there's a simple column called employee ID and employee ID is been used in let's suppose 10 files okay so if let's suppose employee ID because in the in the in the starting we have less employees so we uh, give the length of the attribute of employee ID as uh, till triple nine okay but after some time the employee count increase and we want to increase the length of the field so when if you have declared the field in all the 10 physical files, so you have to go ahead and change all the 10 physical file. Okay. But on the other hand, if you have done like you, if you have architecture like this of reference field, you have to just change the value in reference field and it will be automatically getting used in all the other files. Hope you got this logic. Yeah. Got it, right? Yes. Okay. So yes, this is how we give REF field, input field, and we'll give the record format and we'll, instead of giving the length and type, we'll just say R here. Okay. So in the reference also, there are a lot of logic. The first thing is there, you can directly write whatever thing is written in the input file, like an in input file, it's the field name is imp name. Okay, and if you're writing the same name, you, you don't need to give the reference field. Okay, the program will automatically, like because the field names are same there, so they will got to know that which field you're referring. But if you want to change the field name, okay, like I've uh, in the file, it is mentioned as employee ID, but here I have, like I wanted to give the name as ID only, then I have to give this option as ref field. So this will tell the program that this, this ID is based on this field, which is from this file. Hope you got it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is a concept. Moving on to another thing. Logical file is there. I've already explained you. Yes, this select and omit thing I will explain. Yes, so this S, the last column you see, it mm -hmm. means that this S means it is selecting those records. Okay, so what all options are there? Either it can be select or it can be omit. Okay, select means it will select those records omit mean it will deselect those records it will omit those records when we do a run query on this file okay so let me give you an example so right now i don't know it is compiled or not how many records are there okay one, two, three records, lot of records are there. Okay. okay. Yes. One other thing. So the records is records are there in a file. And after that, I've changed the source. And if I will compile the source again, all the data, which is there in this file will be getting vanished because the new object will be getting created. I'll give you an example. Input file, let me copy it somewhere with this name. File one. Oh, not the library.
I'm just creating a copy of it so that uh, after it's been deleted. So right now, you see we have two files. Okay, this is we'll be having the record. So this input file run query is having records, right? After I'll be I'll be deleting, I'll be compiling it. The records will be getting. Okay, cannot delete file. Yes, the file cannot be deleted because we have logical files attached to it. Okay, so I have to first first delete the logical file work object INPUT log for delete it. Now so the compilation means the old object will be getting deleted and new object will be getting created. And you'll be getting this option also. Confirm compile it. So it's saying that delete the existing object. So you'll, if you'll press yes. Input file type. Yeah, it's deleted. Okay, and new object. So when you'll do run query again on input file, you'll Okay, this is found input file work on input file. I think it was not created. We got some error. Yes, we have got some error. So we have to look for that error. What is that error? We have 20 and 37. Incorrect. Key field name specified more than once okay so if you compile any object so this is how we check the error let's suppose i compile this object and uh, i want to check that what is the error it has not uh, uh, what what is the error because of which the program or the file is not getting compiled you'll say sp sp is a shortcut for work with a spool file and then shift f6 shift f6 is the shortcut key for going to the bottom because like in the bottom the new spool files will be getting created and then five here after five bottom from the bottom you'll see that errors 20 to 29 severity error is one and we have 30 to 299 severity one so if the error falls less than 20 then it's kind of warning, okay? So from zero to nine, it's informational. Like uh, it may be the case that some of the time you have declared the variable and you have not used it. So those are the kind of very, uh, informational. Warning means like it, it will not stop the program to work, but it may be the case that at some point, point of time and in some scenario while running the program, you'll be getting that those error, but the program will be getting compiled. And these errors, 20 to 99, those errors are the one which we have to resolve it. Uh, will be the program, the object will not be getting created unless and until this errors are resolved. Okay. So here we see the two error messages are here, CPD errors. Uh, if, if we have given the severity 20 to 30. So we have to first resolve the, the higher severity and it, Maybe the case that some of the time, if you resolve the higher severity error, the, the lower severity error is automatically getting resolved. Okay. So uh, this gives the description also that the keyword is specific, specified at incorrect level, key field name specified more than once. Okay. So let's see where the error is actually. So the error is in imp ID only. Okay. And the value is one and two employed is. So we have to see that what is the error? What can be the possible errors there? Let's see the source. Okay, if you, let's suppose, let me comment on these things. One and two. 
Yeah, the two errors are there. Something is wrong. It is not allowing me to put a select statement here. Mm -hmm. hmm. Some of the time you have to, in AS400, you have to uh, do an R&D kind of thing. Mm -hmm. oh, it is not getting compiled. Hmm, I got it. R F. If I delete and delete this. So what I have done is it can be the case that error will be getting resolved. I have uh, used this file as a ref field in this physical file, right? And what I said that the input file will be not be handing any data. We should not, uh, we cannot put any key field and those kind of thing in a, a reference file, which will be where the actual attribute has been defined. So. It may be the case that because of that, it is getting, giving the error. But let me check this. File. Again. Hmm. Key field name specified more than once. I have defined only single time imp id. What is the error? Okay, I'll figure it out. What is the error? And maybe in the tomorrow class, we'll discuss what was the error. Okay, because I'll keep on like looking for it and it will waste, it will waste our time. So the thing is, this mm -hmm. kind of operation, the select statement, how we have put, and when we give the value, so this is star means we are commenting this line, okay, A star. So these lines are not active. That's how we do. So what was the actual thing expected from this line of code is values one, two, it means that it should select only those employee IDs whose values are one and two and other employee IDs, the values will be uh, like not getting shown when you do the run query. This was the purpose of this line of code. And if you say instead of S, if you put omit, it means it will omit one and two and if three, four, and other employees are there, it will show only those things. So this is a basic concept of select and omit. Hope you got it. I'm not getting that pointers you're having right the left and right while you're moving, lines are moving along. Yeah, this lines you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you will do it from here. Reference, appearance, and display. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, again, in, the, in that edit, we have the preference. You have appearance and those are things you can do. Like color is there. You can change the color, skin background, color, what you want. So you can change this stuff black. You can change to white and this green, you, you can turn it to black. So, but this is a standard thing. That's why you use it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do 
display. So here you have cursors. Have uh, it's rule rule line. Okay. So then rule line it it will be off for you. Okay. So just make it on. So mm -hmm. that's how this plus sign will be there. A lot of people don't like this, but I generally prefer because in this way I got to like clearly that where my pointer is actually. Okay. Yeah. So you can turn it on. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So this physical file we have cleared it. So mm -hmm. yes. So it was a simple physical file and simple logical file. Okay. Now we are heading uh, like I'm taking it to level two. Okay. It was level one, you can say. So this physical file is having only one member. Okay. When you do uh, DSP FD and uh, INPUT. So this file is not created. Well, let's stay. Let's compile this file. I don't know it will be getting compiled or not. Let me delete all these things. In this way it will be getting compiled. file yeah now it's created so dsp fd and inpu input file here you'll see one option maximum members so it's one here the number of members are one here but let's suppose I'm giving you an example of multi-member physical file, which will have more than one member. So let's suppose uh, you have a transaction file. Okay, you are storing uh, the bank transaction, and you want January data to be stored in one place, February data you want to store in another place, and depending upon uh, uh, the month you want to segregate the data, but you don't want to create a different physical file. For a for a different month, you want to keep because the all the structure will be same. Only the data which will you will be loading that has to be different. So so to cater this problem, we we have a concept of multi-member physical file. Okay, so mm -hmm. the command to add a member to a file is add pfm, which means add physical file member. Okay, so INPU input file library, it's not acquired. You can give it or it will take from the library list. Member, you will, I'll give the name new, new one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we get an error that the, uh, the maximum number of members when you compile it, right? Yeah, when you compile it, there is an option which is called this maximum number of members. So in general, almost 90% of the file will be having only one members. Okay, because they want to store just the data and pick it. But some of the files will be having multiple members. So to if you want to uh, change, like add more members, you have to compile it again. But if you compile it, the data will be getting lost. So the solution for this is we have one command, chgpf, change the physical file. Okay, in this way, you will you can change the attribute of physical file. Like here we have, you can give from one member to one member without losing any records from that file. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. So, yes. So now, because I've compiled, you'll see no records in input file. Okay. We don't have any record. Okay. 
So we'll copy record from the, uh, the backup file. So the command to copy from two files is cpyf copy file. Okay, you have to give the from file input file one, and I want to copy to inpu input file. Okay, and you can specify the members also, like from which member you want to copy. By default, is first to first, and uh, you want to replace the record or you want to add the record. This is the option you. Like you want to create a file or the file is already created, those options are there. So I'll give, we have lot many options in this file, uh, cpyf command. Like if you want to specify that uh, you want to copy only data which is having employee ID as one. So those kind of uh, thing you can give here, like in cool record character test. So this, so this will cover up later in our further classes. This is a when we'll be discussing CL commands, right? At that time, we'll discuss, but just because I was doing it, I said it. Okay, so 211 records copied in that file. Yes. So records are there, and uh, I'm not able to add a new member in this file because the maximum number of members are there. So now the scenarios, I don't want to lose the record and I want to increase the number of member count, which is uh, the attribute which is already there in this file from one to the other thing. So what we'll do, CHG PF is the command. Uh, it will ask for a which physical file you want to perform this operation. Input file is a file in the library, press F10. And then you can change the maximum number of member to I'll say five. Okay, so input file, library chain and then I'll do run query. I want to see that the records are there or not. So yes, the records are already there, but uh, yes, the input file we have already, uh, like the maximum number of member, we have changed it. So we'll give the command, this one, add PFM, new one. We can see the member new is been added. So if I'll say DSP FD input file, then you'll see the maximum number of members. Maximum number of members has been changed to five and the number of members has been changed to two. And if I'll do run query, okay, and uh, I want to queue input file. The records are there, but if it's, I'll see new one, then no records are there. It means that the value is there only in first member. In the second member, we don't have any values. Hope you got it. Mm -hmm. So this is how we like multi-member physical file looks like. Hope it's clear till this point. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a logical file. In logical file, we have only one physical file defined, right? What we can do. So in logical file, there are two types of logical file. One is John logical file and one is multi format logical file. Okay. So in logical file, there may be scenario that you want to display only like two files without combining them. Okay. So in that case, what you'll do is browse, I'm in browse mode. It's already in use somewhere. It's open. I think yes, here it is open. Let's do the change here only. Okay. So let's suppose I want to Yes, one more concept is this unique keyword. Okay. So in file, if you want that only unique values should be stored, like in the employee table, generally uh, anyone don't want to store a duplicate employee ID, right? Mm -hmm. So this unique keyword, what it will do at the time when you add, you, you have written a logic through SQL or through logic, you are entering any employee ID, like you want to add any record which is already there, 
in this file. So if you have defined this unique keyword in that file, it will not allow you to add the duplicate records in that file. But here the catch is this unique keyword will select the unique based on all the key fields defined. Let's suppose you have, if you want to keep only employee ID as unique, that then you have to like delete this row. In this scenario, if let's suppose you you have entered employee ID as one and you have entered the employee, let's suppose age is there, age as 50. But if you're entering employee ID one and age as 51, it's, it is not a duplicate because the, uh, it will create a unique record by considering both the field. If you enter the employee D1 as the and the age 23 and again employee D1 and age 23, then it will throw an error. That's how it works. So this unique field will work on the combination of key fields, not for the single key fields. Hope you got it. Yeah. Got it, right? Okay. Yes, multi-format I was explaining you, right? Yes. So multi-format means, let's suppose you have two files. One is input file, one is input file one. Okay. Input file one is there. And yes. So it will look like this multi-format logical file. So it means that you input file because 10 is the length that's why it is giving error one has been not yes so these two different files are there so you can like design a logical file out of it and it will display all the fields of both the files hope you got it yes i got it okay the other concept is joint logical file. Let's suppose so this will display all the records in physical file, like this file, and in this file also it will select the record. Okay. But it doesn't make sense actually. Some of the time it makes sense, some of the time it doesn't make sense. So let's suppose these files are having same structure, like in which scenario this, this thing will be meaningful. And uh, let's suppose you have employee file and department file. You are not having any linkage between both the file. Okay. So because em uh, employee ID is having like 10 fields, which are different and department is having the values, which is specific to the department. So in that way, both the files are not related, related in the men's the, uh, the fields are different for both the files. So in that scenario, this multi-format logical file is of no use. It has been used only in, in let's suppose you have employee ID table and you have five reasons. Generally banks or any software operates in multiple reasons, like in India, in US we have. And anyone want to see, and you have like the employee table in all those five reasons, whose attributes are same, the fields are same, but the data are different. And you want to want to perform any activity by taking input from, like you want to club all the employee table of all the reasons. Okay. So in this scenario where the actual attributes or the, the fields of that files are similar, in that scenario only this multi-format non-join logical file will be of use. Hope you it's clear to you. So join logical file is something. Like let's suppose you have an employee table and a department table. In employee table, you have the field called department. And you want to link, you want to create one logical file which can combine those two, those two files, then employee file and the department file. So what you'll do is you can you'll use the word join and then you, then you'll say input file and the field department will match with department file department this is the kind of command uh, tomorrow i'll uh, like actually execute and I'll, I'll show it to you so mm -hmm. in this way 
it will join the both the fields of the uh, the fields from the input file department field and the department field from the department file and this way and in this way uh, this logical file when you will be doing run query in this logical file it will display the employee data and then whatever be the department of this employee it will show the department data also going further 